This is a reading of The Midwife's Apprentice, Chapter 13, Visitors. Janet was well content with Alice. The girl didn't steal food, sneak ale, or dally with the guests. She was strong, willing, undemanding, and she had enough common sense to do what she was bid and ask no questions. So Alice laid fires and swept floors and carried water all that spring. <clears throat> she, was all, she was learning also to over yeast the bread and weigh the mugs so that much of what she served was merely air or iron. She stirred who knows what poor wild thing into the stew and called it beef or rabbit. When important looking guests arrived and Janet called to Alice in a loud voice to put clean sheets on the big bed, Alice knew she was to do no such thing, but the important looking guests overheard and were comforted by the thought. Thundering toads, Janet would say, I am but a poor woman with this wretched inn and a blind man to care for. I am sure God does not begrudge me my little economies. And she got by with it because she was so round and rosy and merry and with it all so fair in that she cheated everyone the same. As spring burst into May and the trees were all flowers and the magister, Red Reese, decided to stay one more season, there came to the inn a comely young man who acted so lordly, Alice thought he must be a knight or a mayor, but proved to be the carpenter's assistant from the manor. She watched and listened to him, and finally, while serving his mutton pie, was bold enough to ask. The boy, Edward, who arrived at the manor for the thrashing, do you know him? How does he fare? Never heard of him. A little boy, near seven, although small and puny for his age never seen him. Mayhap he run off or die or got eaten by a goat. The carpenter's assistant grinned at this with mutton stuck between his lordly white teeth. Alice's heart thumped. Was she too stupid then even to have helped Edward? Was he not safe at the manor as she thought, but somewhere unknown and unsafe and unfit? Or did the lordly young man just not bother to notice small boys? Then on a day so like summer that the apple trees were tricked into fruit, there came another visitor. Alice had just finished watering the beer and was kneading sawdust into the pie crust when she heard the rumble of a cart on the inn path. A load of wood had come for the kitchen and walking behind the wagon was the redheaded boy from the village, Will Russet. Alice forgot for a moment that she was no longer the midwife's apprentice, but now a failure. And wiping her flowery hands on her skirt ran outside. Will, Will Russet, it's me, Alice. Alice, he called. We were wondering where you had got to and were you all right? What be you doing here? <clears throat> the sunshine faded from Alice's face, skinning rabbits and sweeping floors and mucking out the privy. I am the inn girl. And a prettier inn girl the world never saw, said Will, or you will be if you ever got that flower and dirt off your face. Come talk to me while I unload the cart. Alice spat on her fingers and rubbed her face, but succeeded only in making both face and hands equally dirty. So she gave it up and followed Will to the woodpile, where she sat and listened to the news of the village. Alice Little was fat and bonny and had three teeth. The baker's wife kept her husband tied on a short rein to his ovens. Gromit Smith had married Alden Figtree, under steward at the manor a timid little man who called her Mistress Fig, dear, Fig Tree, my dear, and stayed mostly out of her way for fear of being swatted like a fly. 
How be you, Alice? Will asked when he had run out of gossip. Why did you run? Alice thought of what she might say. That village did not suit me, or the midwife was stingy and greedy and harsh, or I found I did not care for babies. But when out, but when her mouth opened, out came the story of her failure with Emma Blunt and how she discovered she was too stupid to be the midwife's apprentice. Bah, Alice, I seen you with Tansy. You got guts and common sense. Just because you don't know everything don't mean you know nothing. Even midwife, even Jane midwife herself don't know everything, though she thinks she do, Will said, winking at her with an eye as green as new grass and friendly as a summer sky. Suddenly shy, Alice ran back to the inn and the visit was over. Though she remembered it again and again during the weeks that followed. Before the month was out, another familiar face showed at the inn. One day when Alice returned from gathering wood sorrel to make a sauce, there at the table was Jane Sharp, the midwife herself, in her starched wimple and second best gown deep and earnest with conversation with Magistrate Reese, Ma Magister Reese. Alice's face grew hot and then as cold as bare feet in January. Her throat tickled and her eyes stung as she imagined the midwife telling Magister, Magister Reese of the girl's stupidity, her incompetence and her failure. Run away, she said to herself, run away but her shame was less than her curiosity. That and her desire not to leave Magister Reese hearing only the worst of her. So she stayed hiding in the shadows of the room to listen without being seen. Janet pinched her and thrust a jug into her hands. So she began to move toward the table as slowly and silently as she could until she was close enough to hear. And I brew some of my sage tea, unequaled for a woman likely to miscarry due to the slipperiness of her womb. Jane Sharp was not then talking of Alice, but of herself. Alice should have known, and Max, Magister Reese was writing it all down in his great encyclopedia while the cat nibbled his cheese and bread. Jane continued, I myself use a tea of black elder bark and a smut rye to stop excessive bleeding. But I have heard that rubies either worn on the body or ground into a powder and taken in warm wine do even better. If the woman is lucky enough to own rubies and rich enough to let them be ground into. She never even noticed Alice as the girl refilled her mug. Alice returned to the shadows. Will Russet, she heard the midwife say to Magister Reese, a boy from the village, tells me my apprentice is here at the inn. My former apprentice, might I say, for she ran away. You seen her here? Skinny girl with black curls and big sad eyes, afraid to say boo. Before Magister Reese could say nay or yea, the midwife went on. She was not as stupid as some I've had, I've had, I have had and better company, but still perhaps her going was for the best. She was not what I needed. Because I failed, whispered Alice in the shadows, because she gave up. Continued the midwife, I need an apprentice who could do what I tell her, take what I give her, who could try and risk and fail and try again and not give up. Babies don't stop their borning because the midwife gives up. She landed her sharp glance on Magister Reese for a moment, drank off her ale in one long swig and was gone. <laughs>